there, stampers and crafters. My name is Tammy White from stampwithtammy.com and welcome to our online class. Today's theme is Father's Day and we are going to be making floating frame fishy cards for father. <laughs> Let's try to say that five times fast. So this is a really fun technique. Normally we see it done with flowers and florals and uh, I thought let's go outside the box and make this for dad or for the, the fisherman or fisherwoman in your life. And uh, let's play with the best catch bundle which is a really fun one. We're going to be using some Stampin' Blends and doing some uh, blending coloring today. I will also be using the Stamparatus in the, the uh, die cut machine. And this is a super cool technique. It um, it's, it's like 3D. It's very, very cool. In fact, I'm not even sure that photo does it any justice, but if you look at it here, it is just such a wow, right? You're like, oh my gosh, how does that even work? Super, super cool. So we're going to make both of these cards. Believe it or not, we're going to make them both at the same time, which is pretty cool. If you are watching live on Facebook, these are our live prizes today. I'll be doing the drawing immediately following this video broadcast. We are broadcasting live. The video will always be up on Facebook. If you couldn't make the live, it will also be up on YouTube. Today is also my Stampin' Demonstrator Group's Father's Day blog hop. And what that means is we don't just have this project today that, that we're doing. We also have an array of amazing Father's Day masculine themed projects from my entire demonstrator group. So that is just awesome. After this video, you're going to want to click on the resource page of this video or go to stampwithtammy.com. You'll be able to take the blog hop tour there. All the it's, it's really easy. The instructions are there. And we also have a special giveaway. So this means that there are two different types of giveaways on today's video. The first one is um, the live ones. If you leave a comment on this live video, you will be entered to win. And the second one is the blog hop giveaway from our group. In order to enter that one, you want to take the blog hop. You'll want to leave a comment on each page, each blog in the hop, each project, and you want to use the hashtag stamp it contest. It's really important that you use that hashtag because we search on that to get our um, contest entries. So that is how you enter our lots of happy card kit giveaway. You can enter both. And this video will also, the replay will also be up on YouTube following uh, this broadcast. And we also have the winner of last month's blog hop listed on there too. So uh, congrats to that. And you'll want to pop on over there and see if it was you. Maybe you're a visual learner. Maybe we all are visual learners. That's why we love YouTube so much. Maybe you love uh, getting these classes, getting, you want more classes. I have exclusive classes every month for my VIP online club. And they also include not just video, but tutorials with pictures and written instructions, uh, which is something I get requests for a lot. I have a special class for them every month, as well as uh, bonus projects every week and uh, special offers, prize patrol every month just for them. And in addition to all of that, there are special offers and they get free catalogs and free stamps. It is a fantastic program. I love it. One of my favorites. I have been doing that for uh, almost 14 years and absolutely love it. So if you join in the month of May, if you join the online club, you will get a free grab bag from me. The details of that are on my stampwithtammy.com blog under specials. Also under specials, you will get uh, some information on the retiring list. So things are going and now everything is while supplies last. Uh, this catalog uh, comes out annually. A new one will be coming out on June 4th. If you don't have your copy yet, if you're not a regular customer and didn't get yours in the mail, go to stampwithtammy.com and click on Stampin' Up! Catalogs to request one. The old catalog is going and a lot of things are being discontinued so new stuff can come in and there's some great stuff going. So be sure to uh, check that out. You don't want to miss out on your favorite colors that are going. You don't want to miss out on favorite stamps and products. Um, the stamp sets, we make them ourselves so we were making them up until yesterday. So if we ran out of a certain really popular stamp set like say Lovely as a Tree, <laughs> We could make more, but they will no longer be making them after yesterday. So what's left in stock is what's left. Once the stamp sets sell out, they're gone, and the accessories have always been while supplies less. Okay, so that's the deal on the uh, retiring list products. And I'm going to give a shout out here because I've gotten a lot of uh, messages on the trimmer blades. If you have the Stampin' Up! trimmer that is, um, we are going to be replacing this at some point in, over the next year. 
Um, unfortunately, there won't be one in the new catalog, but we don't know when the new one's coming out. This one is being discontinued. The blades for it are currently on back order. There is one more shipment coming in. We don't know when it is. I will post on Facebook and my blog as soon as I get any information because the last run that came in sold out in minutes. I don't want you to miss out. So be sure to stay tuned. Make sure that you have your your following my Facebook page or my blog or both so that you get the information on that if you are waiting for those trimmer blades. They are very popular. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I could probably, if I had some, I could probably make a million dollars off of all the, the requests and, and, and contact I've gotten on those uh, super popular blades. And uh, in the month of May, the Everything Rosy bundle is available. So this is while supplies last too. So this could also sell out before the end of the month, which is just this coming week. So it's only a few days left on this. Rose gold, beautiful. I've done several classes on this. We did, uh, I have a VIP online club class on this, uh, exclusive to the VIP. I have two on my stampwithtammy.com blog videos and classes just showing this amazing, it's a really great deal. There's a ton in this bundle. So it's really awesome. That's only available till the end of the month. And um, this is just a, the paper pumpkin. For those of you who love paper pumpkin, I did my, my reveal video. Soon I'll be doing the uh, alternate for the May project. But we have a little sneak peek at what's coming in June. Um, and you need to just subscribe by June 10th to get that kit. If you would like uh, some more information on that sneak peek, go to stampwithtammy.com and click on the paper pumpkin. Last but my favorite thing, <laughs> and that is the Capture the Good Special Offer Bundles. I uh, was honored to be able to inspire and help design a stamp set for Stampin' Up! that's coming out in the new catalog, and I'm just over the moon about it. I'm so excited. And it is uh, a, a camera set. I love photography, so that was what I wanted to um, use for my design. Uh, you don't have to be a photographer to love it. There's some witty sayings. I have a lot of great ideas. Um, I've done a class on it. I have this special offer. There's two different size bundles on my blog, including... Um, a tutorial and uh, if you want I'll even sign the, the stamp set for you you can get that information on my blog the deadline for that is June 3rd and if you are in my VIP club or a, de a demonstrator in my stamp a demonstrator group I have special pricing for you contact me for that link okay so that's what's happening in Stampin' Up! World if you are popping on right now this is what we're doing today we are going to be making floating frames for a father in fishies <laughs> Lots of fun. So let's get started. And here we go. All right. Sorry, just rearranging my phone so it doesn't fall down. Uh, in case you popped on late, these are the live prizes. I will be drawing immediately following this video. I will post in the comments on Facebook and as well as on my winner's page on my blog, which is linked in the top of this uh, in the video's description. As a, with every online class, I have a follow along PDF. This is free on my blog. So you click on the resource page. I like to make it really simple. The, this video that we're creating right now will be always be up on that resource page. If you have a hard time finding it and want to go back to find it, several ways to do that. One is go to stampwithtammy.com, click on the video gallery. All of my videos will come up there. If you have this free PDF, I also have the direct URL here or if you have a smartphone, you can zap the smart code and it will also bring you back to the resource page that has all the information that we're using today, photos, measurements, and all of the supplies. And I'm gonna be using uh, Stampin' Blends on an array of different colors here. If you would like the colors, if, uh, if you missed one while I'm coloring, you can bounce over to that resource page, all of the information is there, as well as the information on this best catch bundle that we're using. So it's this awesome fishy stamp set. I absolutely love it. And this is the, the floating frame cards that we're going to be making with it. There's two of them. We're actually going to make them both together. Super fun. So you guys ready to get started? Let's do it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is stamp our images. So what I've got here is a half a sheet of eight and a half by 11. I have stamped four of each image in Memento Black ink on this sheet. We'll need four of each for the fish, for the lures, for the bag, for the hat. And then, whoops, all my scrap paper around, we can color. Okay, 
So uh, if you're new, if you're just popping on, we're using this Best Catch Bundle. This is the stamp set that I stamped these images in, and we are going to color. Wait, do you see this? This is so yummy. All right, here are our statement blends that we're using today. I'm going to go over this once. I'll, I'll shout out when I'm using each one. But again, if you missed a color, pop on over to the resource page to get it. Uh, this is Old Olive, Pineapple Punch, Call Me Clover, Poppy Parade, Crumb Cake, I'm sorry, Soft Suede, Crumb Cake, and a Color Lifter. We may or may not use the Color Lifter. It just depends. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. All right, so what we're going to do is color the images in with the Stampin' Blends because it really makes them pop. I absolutely love the blends. So fun. So fun to, to mix the colors up too and, and get different, different um, color palettes. So let's start with, I'm going to do the fishy last. Let's start with this, um, this little uh, basket here, this little fishing, I don't know what you call that, the little fishing something or other. So I've got a, uh, that was the dark pineapple punch that I just used for the buckle. Do you guys want me to zoom in a little bit more so you can see a little bit closer here? Sometimes with the coloring, it helps to see a little bit closer. Okay. Now I'm switching over to, um, actually, let's go to crumb cake first. Crumb cake, I'm going to do this inner. So I've got the light crumb cake. Mm, actually, that was the dark crumb cake. Yeah, that was dark. No biggie. We'll make it work. I can make anything work. <laughs> okay, try that again. We're going to do the light crumb cake around that little pocket on the front. And then blend it with a little bit of dark. Okay, so there's two different ways that you can do that blending a lot of times people will put the dark on first and then blend it with the light I actually like it to be really wet I find it blends better when things are really wet so I'll put a coating of the light on first add the darker and then blend it with the lighter I just like the way it blends better that way but it is total personal preference how you do that and I am going to use the um, now next up we've got the soft suede so again I'm going to start with the lighter and I'm going to color in the whole background of the basket. And we're all gonna be lefties today. Who are my lefties out there? Shout out to my lefties. <laughs> Whenever I color, I feel like you guys are all gonna be lefties. Sorry if that messes you righties up. But hopefully I don't uh, block your view because that's one thing we lefties like to do this and block the view. So I try not to do that while I'm coloring, but sometimes it's hard. Okay, so I've colored the whole thing in with the light. And then I'm going to take this, this. This is the darker soft suede. Now, if you were coloring all of these in at once, just beware. They dry very, very quickly, and they really blend best when they're wet. So what that means is you may want to do them one at a time if you're doing the blending, just because you want to do a small area as opposed to doing a large area. Totally up to you, though. So now I'm blending back with a lighter soft suede. So we've got our, our baskets pretty much done there. So cute, right? Next up, we are going to actually, I'll leave these soft suede's out. We're going to use that on the fishing lure right here. So I've got the, I just got to make sure I got the right colors going on here. I got the light soft suede and I'm using the nib tip because the lure is kind of skinny right here. So I, I got the brush tip of the dark, but I'm just, I'm just all over the place, there, aren't I? So that was just to add a little bit of shading so it pops. Okay, so that's all we need with the soft suede on that one. And then we're going to move over to Call Me Clover for the... I, I just wanted to have a lot of fun with the feathers on this one. And you know what? I'm doing the nib tip just because those are really kind of thin, especially on the bottom. And each one of these Stampin' Blends comes with a brush tip and a nib tip. I like the nib tip when you're working with smaller surfaces. So I'm just putting a tiny little bit of dark Call Me Clover there for a little drama. Gives it a little bit of depth. And then we'll blend it back in with the lighter. 
Maybe a little bit on the end there. That could have been brown too, or blue. Okay. You are very welcome, Kathy. She says thanks for providing the PDF. I'm glad you guys find those helpful. Okay, so I kind of got that underneath here. Okay, so next up we'll do the hat. I'm saving fishy for last. He's the most, uh, they're all fun to color. I find this, I don't know about you guys, but I find the, the coloring to be very therapeutic. Actually, I'm going to start with the poppy parade. So I've got light and dark poppy parade here. I'm using the nib tip again here. <laughs> and Marcia says she's a forced lefty. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, today we're all, we're all going to be lefties today. So... You know what? Being lefty is the best. I'm sorry for you, all you righties out there, but being lefty is just the bomb. Dot com. Why? Because we make all you righties move when we eat. <laughs> we get our choice at the dinner table, right? Nobody wants to sit next to the lefty because <laughs> you elbow them. <laughs> oh, I'm just being silly. Okay. So I, I used a little bit of light and dark there on the band and... We're going to use a little bit of chrome kick here for the actual fishing hat. It's funny, uh, funny ironic about this is that uh, after this video, my son and I are taking a jaunt over to Cabela's, you know, where they have all the fishing gear. They have these cute little hats there. And that little band comes in multiple colors too, so if you wanted to do it in different color than Poppy, sure, go ahead. Oh, that's sweet. Donna's dad used to tie his own flies. How cool. The flies are the part of the lure, in case somebody wasn't uh, didn't know fishing term. Super cool. We used to fish here at my house, but now the kids, like, we do have fish out back. I live on a lake, and uh, the kids, we, we have these little sunfish out, out back off the dock, and they're so stupid, the sunfish are, that, you know, we feed them bread, and literally, you can almost catch them with your hands. So the kids have gotten a little bit lazy. They don't cast anymore. They just take a net and scoop, put the fish, put the bread down and scoop them up. And then they, it's instant gratification. And then they, you know, like to say they caught 20 fish in an hour. Kind of fun. Okay, so I'm, I'm using the light. This is where I had a little fun with the fish. Okay. Oh, Diana says, have you tried being a righty? No, no, I like being a lefty. But I do try not to cover up the image when I'm coloring with you because I do understand that that is probably not fun for you guys when you're trying to learn something. Okay, so I'm kind of just, can you see that? Just I'm drawing a line around his little belly there and I made it a little jiggly. This is the light poppy parade that I did that with. This is, I'm, I'm going to say this is a trout for you fishing people out there. Correct me if I am wrong on this, but I believe the trout has a little orange underbelly, but I wanted that orange to really, really blend in, really blend in. So now I'm using a light um, pineapple punch. That is a really cool idea, Beth says she used... Um, Wink of Stella on her fish after, which is really cool. Really cool because that'll make them shimmer. Okay, so what I'm doing here is taking uh, taking a darker pineapple punch. What I really want to do is blend. Okay, so I, I don't want that line to be one solid line. And I hope this is okay with you guys. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more just while I'm doing this piece just because I really want you to see it. I'm going to do something. I know you're all going to gasp at first. I'm taking the light pineapple punch uh, stamp and blend and I'm lifting some of this poppy parade off the light poppy parade why am I doing that you might ask because I really want this color to blend in so there's no lines there and that's gonna soften up the lines it's not gonna ruin either one of these markers I know that's the, I know that's the gas going on out there it's not gonna ruin either one because I'm just gonna wipe it off after and then they go right back to normal It's kind of like those uh, clear blender pens that we used to color with also called blenders, but slightly different than these. Okay, so see how that blended everything in? That just softened it up. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe off that extra poppy off my pineapple marker. It's not the same as dipping, you know, poppy parade ink in a pineapple ink pad. This is not the same. It will come right off your, your stamp and blend markers. It's a cool technique. I'm just going to go over this a little bit more with the, the blends. Okay, so 
I'll back you back out again. I just wanted you to see that little piece. Okay. Next up, you're right. This stamp set is not just for men, Sabrina. This is obviously, there are a lot of women fishermen out there and it's super cute, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna finish up with the two old olive markers. So I'm starting with the light and then we'll move over to the, the darker one. And I am gonna blend, I'm going over intentionally a little bit over that uh, poppy parade line there because I wanna blend it in with the, the old olive as well. Blending is the name of the game today. And then I'm going to go back over it with the dark. It is a lid to a plastic container. Is that what you guys are asking? What my blends are on? Hold on. <laughs> oh, the silly things. Okay, this is what I store my cards in. These are little uh, containers. Sorry for the side jaunt here. Somebody's asking about this. This is a container I got at Target. It, it holds my cards normally, but sometimes if I have a bunch of projects going on at once, I'll put all the supplies in them. This is the lid to it. It's really not, it wasn't made to hold Stampin' Blends. It just made it easier for me to carry them all at once. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled fish. <laughs> oh, that's probably the best tip you guys are going to get all day, right? <laughs> the, the plastic Walmart, uh, plastic Target container. Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of dark old olive here just to blend in. And then I'm going back with the light. And again, I am intentionally crossing over this, this poppy line that we put on his underbelly. So I'm just blending in the darker there to really make it pop. And then one last thing, I'm just gonna, to, to finish that blending, because we, we went over that line with the intentionally with the olive, I'm gonna take the pineapple and kind of blend that last line in. So everybody kind of just kind of blends in beautifully together and there isn't any solid line there okay so those are the four images you you want four four of each so i stamped this whole thing and you would color them all but through the magic again lid here this is a lid to a plastic container which is really for that I'm wanting to know through the magic of facebook live and youtube video i happen to have all of these done for you so what I did was I took each one I took there is a uh, die for each of these a die for each of these put it on the big shot die cut machine and cut them out so I have four of each cute little designs here it is that easy the blends are fun to play with and you know what if, if you do it at first and you're like oh I don't like what I did just don't 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 quit just keep playing with it and then you know what it's fun to play with the images even if you're not going to use them on a card just so you get used to using them they really are it's like coloring in a coloring book when we were little it's very therapeutic okay so I have four of each image here colored and cut out ready to rock and roll we need one this is a quarter sheet of eight and a half by 11. Again, the measurements are all on the, um, the PDF. You can get that on my, my uh, resource page. Okay, so, and yours do not have to line up exactly the same as what I'm about to do here. But what you really want to happen is you want everything, actually, I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out. I'm gonna put one big fish in the middle and then work my way out with the image. You really want them to be fairly close to each other. That's kind of the key here to the floating frame. So I'm just gonna kind of mix up the images here, twist them around so it's a little bit of a collage of everybody. And um, I even, so like for this, I know, don't, don't, don't gasp again, cutting the fishy in half. Right, so I'm gonna put a half, his little head up here, and maybe his little tail. Oh, thanks for the hearts you got down here. I love that. If you are watching the replay after, you may not see that, but um, on Facebook you can do the heart. I'd say that Facebook's way of applause is the uh, the heart shower. Love it. Now I'm not attaching these. 
these are not being attached they are just they're just being uh, laid out and I might cut a couple more of these in half let's see I think I'm gonna cut another fish on the top here I might use one up here maybe a little tail up there Move that around. It's like a puzzle, right? How do we want these pieces to go? But you know what the cool thing about this is? We're not just making one card here. We're actually making two with this. We're actually going to have two when we're done. And let's see. Let's cut this one up in half and we'll use one half over here. Could you 3D the middle? You're going to 3D everything. You're going to 3D everything. Hang on. <laughs> Hold that thought. She's like, can you 3D the middle fish? Yes, we're going to 3D everything. Heck yeah. That's the fun of the floating frame. Everything is like, pow. Literally jumping up at you. Get it? Get it? Jumping up at you. See the fish? <laughs> okay. Now... I'm trying to be delicate here when I'm moving these pieces, but sometimes I actually found it a little bit easier to use my little tool here to line some of those up in the middle so that everything, I didn't hit this and everything kind of went flying just because they're not attached, intentionally not attached. And I found that every time I do this, I have a little bit of a different layout, a little bit of different things going on here. Looks like I have an extra fish this time. We'll save him for another project. Okay, so I've got everything laid out the way I like it. Okay, here's the magic. It is Glad Press and Seal. Yes, just Glad Press and Seal. Regular stuff here. And um, it's basically the same thing you're going to use on, uh, on your bowl tops. You know, when you're storing stuff in your in your fridge. There's a sticky side to this and a thin side. The sticky side down. Okay. And the sticky the sticky stuff is actually going to hold this, hold your pieces in place. So you don't have to you don't have to gasp every time the table shakes after that. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm just going to gently lift that up. I'm just going to trim off the edges because I got some extra press and seal. We don't need all that. Actually, you know what? We, I guess we can trim off everything here. So rather than just trimming off the press and seal, let's just go ahead and trim the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is flip it upside down because you know how we have these overhang? And you do intentionally want these images to overhang. Take your paper snips and trim that right off. Okay. Oh, Pam, I'm glad you, God, you're getting some new ideas for this set. It's a really super fun one to work with, I think. So I'm just trimming off the overhang of the images, and then we are going to cut our center. And I have another little secret for that, too. Oh, the video's off. Sorry about that. I don't think there's anything I can do to fix that. If the, um, the sound is off from the, the picture. Sorry, guys. But you know what? If it helps, I can do this. Then, then it's not quite as distracting. I hate it when that happens when the sound goes off from the, the, the audio is different than the video. Okay. But unfortunately, that's part of the part of technology. There's not much I can do to fix it. All right. So this is all press and sealed. Everybody's press and sealed down. They are not attached with anything other than press and seal. And we've just trimmed the edges off. Now I'm going to bring in a 
Donna says you might want to unsticky the press and seal. I don't think so. Personally, I don't know that my, maybe it's just my press and seal, but I really didn't, sometimes was afraid it wasn't sticky enough. <laughs> but I mean, it hasn't moved. Okay. So uh, if you feel like your press and seal is extremely sticky, then maybe you do want to do that. That's up to you. Okay. I am jumping in with the big shot die cut machine here and I have got rectangle stitched rectangle frames. This is my, this is my cheat here. I'm using the stitched rectangle frames and I kind of like the kind of the effect that it gives the, the card when we're done. This is the fourth smallest stitched rectangle in case you are wondering which one we are using. Okay. Now we're gonna put the rectangle on. I haven't had a paper, I haven't had a problem with paper ripping, Donna, but again, maybe it's my present seal. Maybe some present seals are stickier than others. So if you find yours is extra sticky, maybe you do wanna unstick it first. That's totally a thing. Watch my, watch my paper rip after I just said that. But when I made my originals, I didn't, I almost felt like it wasn't sticky enough. Okay, so fourth largest, I'm sorry, that was the fourth smallest stitched rectangle and I'm sorry if I just said that wrong. We're going to run it through. I've got the magnetic platform on the big shot die cut machine. Okay. And then, so this is my, this is my cheat here. So what that does is it cuts out and I'm just being gentle here because breast and seal is the only thing holding everything together, right? And I guess I didn't get the super sticky press and seal. Maybe that was another option. Okay, so we have our center for one card, and we have our frame for the second card. But wait, there's more. We're not done yet. <laughs> okay, so now we are actually going to peel this off of the cardstock. So we no longer need this cardstock backing. And we're just going to peel that off very, very gently. Actually, you know what? Let's not peel that off yet. Wait, hold that thought. I want to stamp first, and there's a reason for that, because I don't want to stamp after we've, we've attached. Okay, so I'm going to use this as a guide, and we're going to bring the stamp in because I want to stamp this little guy, and I want him to be a little bit underneath the frame. So we want to, we want to stamp him before we do that. So... I've got our Stamparatus. There's two little magnets on the back and I've got some duct tape on them just to keep them from breaking when they jump together like that. Because they always seem to jump together. Okay, so we need two plates with this, this particular card because we're going to stamp two different things. I'm going to line up my card base. I've got a card base here and that frame that we just made. The press and steel seal is still on the frame. using the magnets to hold it down. And then from the stamp set, I've got two plates here. We want the actual fisherman image. And we'll do for you, Dad. For you, Dad, on that one. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to line up that fisherman so that he is... Um, right down the bottom there over. Okay, so I don't want it to actually pick that one up. I'm going to wait on that one. But see how it's a little bit overlapped with the frame? I, I, I'm doing that on, on purpose. Okay, so take this. Lift it up. Actually, you know what would it be even better is if we put these, put these magnets underneath the frame part so that it doesn't move. Okay. And then the For You Dad is going to be in the center at the top. So we've got Memento Black. Well, now we're going to take this, this frame that we just made off. Careful not to uh, move our card base because we've got everything lined up perfectly on there. Now we're going to stamp him, our little fisherman. 
I could draw some long hair on there and make it a little sexual woman if you wanted to. Masculine was our theme, but that does not mean that you couldn't make this a feminine card. You could even make pink fishies if you wanted to. Okay, so now we are perfectly lined up for our next, or for, actually, we're not going to quite work on this one yet. The step, we're going to just hold, hold steady on that for just a few minutes. Now we're going to peel off the backing. Now just be very careful when you do this. So this I'm peeling off the cardstock. Just want to make sure none of these little um, pieces pop off with it. You know what's the trick to getting those magnets apart? Marsha says you made that look so easy. The trick to getting those magnets apart was that duct tape, the duct tape that I put on it. And I know some people put washi tape, so I think that's the similar effect. Okay, now the other thing you want to be careful of here is that your press and seal does not um, stick to itself. Because once it does that, it's hard to get it apart. Okay, so the next step, and this is totally up to you. The next step is to attach Stampin' Dimensionals and Mini Dimensionals to each piece so they're hidden. Now, the reason why I say this is totally up to you is because if you wanted to, you could just put it on flat. But it doesn't have that same super cool 3D look when you put it on flat. So it is worth taking a little bit of extra time and putting on these tiny little pieces. Now, there's tiny, you want to hit everything. So I'm going to zoom back in again so you can see this. You want to hit everything. There's even these, see that tiny little piece there? So I'm actually even, I've got a mini dimensional that I'm actually cutting in half just to get on that little piece there. So, and I don't want it to show. I know it's hard to get all of those nooks and crannies sometimes because we did get, we do have some little pieces, especially from that lure image. Okay. Oh, we're not to that step yet, Donna. She says, good, I didn't jinx you, it didn't rip. We're not to that step where, where it would rip the images. <laughs> Stay tuned. Let's hope I didn't. Okay. Let's hope we didn't get jinxed. I, th I think we'll, we'll be okay. I don't know. I think maybe just some might be stickier than others. This is my thought on that. Because this, honestly, when I first started working with it, I was like, uh, I don't know if that's going to hold my images. <laughs> but you do want to be careful when you peel it off. We'll get to that point in just a second. Let's, let's finish stickying, and then we'll get there. So uh, I'm putting on here, there are uh, mini dimensionals and full size dimensionals. So for the larger images, I use the full size dimensional. I got to, ah, this is exactly what you don't want to do. <laughs> don't let it fold in on itself. Um, I'm, I'm using the mini dimensionals on the small pieces and I'm using the full size dimensionals on the larger pieces. You just don't want them to show. So that would depend, that would determine which, which size you use. Let's use two on this guy. Okay. So next, I'm just going to peel off the backing. I wish I had an assistant with me today that could have done the backing peeling. <laughs> and again, be careful with this step because you don't want to, uh, you don't want this press and seal to stick to itself. I feel like I need to sing in the silence here. You guys got any good songs for Memorial Day? God bless America, right? <laughs> That's probably the best. I promise I will not hurt your ears with my singing. You guys got any good plans for Memorial Day weekend? I know here in our homestead it is a very exciting weekend because our boat finally went in the water yesterday. It's late. Late, late for us at least and uh, we're very excited because it's, there's just been so much rain that uh, we haven't been able to, to put it in so I think we're going to be playing all weekend okay now here is the, the magic and be very careful here I'm going to line up the top edges So each of these images have Stampin' Dimensionals underneath them. 
press and seal is still on there. Oh, thanks for the hearts, you guys. Okay, now's that step, Donna. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to gently, gently peel off. So worth it, right, Karen? So gently peel this off. Because there are little pieces in here, like that little lure, you want to be careful that it doesn't lift up with the, the press and seal. I feel like I'm revealing a little magic trick here. <laughs> Super fun. Okay. And ready, set, go. All right, there it is, our floating frame card. Super cool, right? And we did it, we did it. Now, if you have, if you didn't perfectly line up, like I got a little bit of overhang here, you might want to trim that. Just t check the back side of it and trim off anything that didn't. But you'll also see how we lined up the See how we lined him up to be a little bit underneath? So that was the trick, using the Stamparatus before we attached the frame to get that. Right, Vicky? She's like, I can't believe it. It's beautiful. It's like magic. Yay. And now you do the same exact thing with this piece. And do you guys want to go ahead and do this one? Let's go ahead and do this one. Why not? It's here. So this one won't have as many pieces, but this is how we make the second card. All right, so... Here we go. I'm just going to gently peel off the backing. So remember, this piece came out of the middle. So remember, we had we cut the, the rectangle out of that. So this was the frame and this was the middle. So we were kind of making two cards in one here. Oh, thanks, Tina. That's a huge compliment coming from you. She says it's stunning. From the woman who makes the most stunning cards ever. Okay. So I'm again putting on these little Stampin' Dimensionals on the back here, using minis. I'm using minis from a leftover paper pumpkin kit. So we're using minis on the small pieces and big ones on the larger pieces. Actually, I think I gotta cut one in half for this side over here. Okay. Ta-da. Well, there's a couple little pieces on this corner. I don't think they're going to make it. I think they're just a tad bit too small even to cut one of these dimensionals up. So we're going to let those go. We're going to let those go for now. Okay. Alice, she says she's all thumbs. I don't know if you saw how easy this was to make. It really, it's really as easy as it looks. Give it a try. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. Okay, so now this, I've got another. So I just took a, a piece of Whisper White cardstock, cut it in half, and folded it in half to make the two card bases. So this was card number one, and the inside will be card number two. Remember, we put that one big fish right in the middle of our piece when we were lining them up. So that's going to go right there. Right? Okay, so then just gently peel off our press and seal oh i forgot it. i forgot to peel the backing on that dimensional there we go that's another reason why you want to go slow just in case you missed a dimensional backing this one looks like it's missing one i forgot to peel the backing off of this one too my goodness that's what happens when i'm trying i was trying to rush through this card should have gone slower. All right, I'm just gonna have to let those corner ones go. And we've got our second card. And you could stamp on this one too if you wanted to, too. Okay, this is, uh, before, I, before I totally let you guys go, I did add a little bit of bling bling. So these two cards, right, we got two in one here. Oh, thanks for all the hearts, I'm glad you guys loved it. So we've got our outer frame and then the inside frame. So there's no waste on that. There's no waste at all. And I'm going to take my take your pick tool, and these are red rhinestones. 
for a little bit of um, bling on the cards. On this one, I put one, two, three on the bottom. And one, two, three on the top. I lost my little corner pieces there, so I'm not quite sure if I'm lined up. I actually don't think those are lined up very well, so if you put them on gently, you can still move them. There. And then press them down after. So we've got a little bling on that one. And then for this one, I took the same red rhinestones. I put them on the fishing hat. I just liked them there. I just thought it was cute. So we got a little bling on there too. And those are our cards. And that is our class for today. Don't forget to download the free PDF on the resource page. I'm so glad you guys love it. Um, I'm just going to remind you if you tuned in late, this is my Stamp It Demonstrator Group's Father Day, Father's Day blog hop. So click on the resource page or go to stampwithtammy.com. 